Tiawath, Tiamat, was not the only monster known to Babylonian mythology, but she is sometimes likened to or confounded with the Serpent of Darkness, with whom she had originally no connection. The best way to describe it would be along came a spider and sat down beside her. The creation of her spouse, Abzu, who must be the Serpent of Darkness, was derived from the Akkadian version of Tiawath. B and P were interchangeable, Absu becoming Abzu. This being was, however, like Tiawath, the offspring of the deep, and the enemy of the divine powers, which is not what it appears to be. Anzu is the lion-faced demon, and the divine storm bird, the source of divine powers, but also a protective curse, and his connection to Tiawath and Abzu is quite simple. Anzu being the lion, but Tia and Ab also mean lion. And as you can see, these three evolve and become Mushusu, the dragon, the protector of Merodak, Marduk, the protector of bitter oppression, for example, the curse upon the tablet and Merodak, the results thereof. We are told in the second verse of Genesis that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and therefore resembling the realm of Abzu, the abyss of Babylonian myth. We are also informed that the serpent was esteemed as more subtle than other beasts of the field, and this it has been pointed out by Professor Seus, because it was associated by the author or authors of Genesis with Ea, the god of waters, and of wisdom, Ea, the ruler of Abzu the House of Wisdom, Lord Zhu, Sen, the Moon God who presides over the waters. The Babylonian geographers, as with the Greeks, the ocean was a coiling, snake-like thing which was often alluded to as the Great Serpent, and this soon came to be considered as the source of all evil and misfortune. The ancient people, and especially the ancient Semites, with exception of the Phoenicians, appear to have regarded it with dread and loathing. The serpent appears to have been called Ai Bu, Bu, Ai Bu, the enemy, cognate with Baal, the enemy, Baal also meaning to convulse or twist, giving us the entwined serpent. In the witchcraft of Babylon, a figure of the possessing force was created alongside the victim, and I believe that is what is happening here. In fact, I'd say it was the first instance, and the second would be Shamash, the son of Sen, who was made to dwell within Ishtar, originally a sanctuary, but now a pit of destruction. We can see how this serpent of darkness the offspring of chaos and confusion, became also the Hebrew symbol for mischief. But don't forget 
The God of Wisdom is also the God of Mischief. He was the first source of the physical and next the source of moral evil. Correct me if I am wrong, but that would be Sen, Lord Zhu. Of course, this would be Abzu. And now we must keep our eye on the bull. The Winged Bulls of Ancient Mesopotamia The Winged Bulls, so closely identified with ancient Chaldean mythology, were probably associated with Merodach. These may have represented the original totemic forms of the gods in question. But we must not confound the bull forms of Merodach and Ea with those winged bulls who guarded the entrances to the temples. Of course, I beg to differ. The bulls of the gate, they perpetrate a double bull. In the same way Mashu refers to a twinned goat, the gatekeepers. They were neither goats nor bulls, but they were divine beings, gods in the flesh, the gods or jinn of the holy places. The human head attached to them indicated that the creature was endowed with humanity, although it could also identify a spirit of the dead. When an animal was sacrificed to a god, the god would identify with that animal until the animal was sacrificed. I can't help but think it is a type of conduit and they are releasing the demon. Don't forget, the wings identify the curse of Zhu. When the Babylonian translated the word bull from the Akkadian tongue, he usually rendered it hero or strong one. The mighty Merodach, Amar Utu, indicating that he is the son of the son of Sen, Lord Zhu, the gatekeeper. The word son also means entrance, to enter. But the problem being that the word bull does not mean hero, and it does indeed refer to Iyar and Merodach in bull form. Ea is the fish god, and Marduk the bull, and synonymous with the word god. And so the winged lion became Imdu Good, the winged bull. The wings identify the curse of Zu. An is cognate with good, Im is cognate with Zu. Du refers to the work in creating this creature, do also relating to a fight, dispute, or quarrel, meaning Anzu and Imgud are interchangeable. Who's a clever boy then? I am. Now give myself a pat on the head. <laughs> it is thought that the bull forms of Ayar and Marodak must have originated at Eridu, for both of these deities were connected with the city. Eri means city or fire, adding Du would mean to build fire. Originally, lightning referred to fire, as this was the main cause. Anzu is the divine storm bird, and if we flip the word, we get Uzna, the word for fire. As you can see, it is upon the breast of both of the bulls.
the Babylonians regarded the sky country as a double of the plane in which they dwelt, similar to the upside down in Stranger Things, or Doctor Strange and the Zoo Dimension, or the Gateway Process and the Holographic Reality. And they believed, this is a later belief by the way, that the gods, as planets, plowed their way across the azure fields of the air. Thus, the sun was the ball of light, and Jupiter, the nearest of the planets to the ecliptic, was known as the planet of the ball of light. Which is another mistranslation. Do not be blinded by the light. The word Caesar or seizure, lu, light, bright, shining, also means treachery, lies, and deceit. The Dog and the Dog Legend in Ancient Babylonia Strangely enough, the dog was classified by the Babylonians as a monster animal, and one to be despised and avoided. I believe it's worth noting that the Molessa of this region no longer shares DNA with the wolf, which must have gave it its more loyal and protective qualities. They were used during battle, when the Babylonians went off to war. The dog breed Molossus was left with their family to guard and protect them. This may be Persian propaganda under the guise of the Babylonian tongue. In a prayer against evil powers, we read, From the dog, the snake, the scorpion, the reptile, and whatever is baleful, Marduk, preserve us. We find that, although the Babylonians possessed an excellent breed of dog, they were not fond of depicting them, either in painting or bas relief. Dogs are seen illustrated in a bas-relief of Ashurbanipal, and five clay figures of dogs, now in the British Museum, represent hounds which belonged to that monarch. The names of these animals are very amusing, but in Sumerian they are not. In fact, the names produce a small piece of text, which we will look at at the end of the video in order to see if there is any correlation between my translations and the hounds of Marduk. The names of these animals are very amusing, and appear to indicate that those who bestowed them must have suffered from a complete lack of the humorous sense, or else has been blessed with an overflow of it. <laughs> Translated, these names are, but the Babylonian script was bilingual with Sumerian. There are two tales, one for the scribe and one for the people. These names are for the people, and the Sumerian will be brought to light soon enough. The Babylonian version of the names are, he ran and barked the producer of mischief, the biter of his foes, the judge of his companions, and the Caesar of the enemies. How well these names would fit certain dogs we have all known or have known. Here is good evidence from the buried centuries that dog nature, like human nature, 
has not changed its wit. But why should the dog, a fellow hunter with early man, and the companion of civilized humanity, have been regarded as evil? My mentor, Professor Sayus, considers that the four dogs of Merodak were not always on errands of mercy, and originally they had been the devastating winds. The seven evil winds of the mace of Marduk, used to defeat Tiamat, who was unreachable and unkillable in the same myth. Sha'ur held the will of Enlil, Lord Wind. In Babylon, the demon Pazuzu was the king of the winds. The demon of the southwest wind would be Arabia, which I call the untouched region. It would appear that the dogs have been demonized, probably due to the work of Nabonidus, the last Babylonian king, who reinstigated the worship of Lord Zhu, Sin, and who left Babylonian wide open for the Persians, almost as if it was handed over rather than conquered. The Dog Legend The fragment of a legend exists, which does not exhibit the dog in any favorable light. Once there was a shepherd, protected by dogs, so they created propaganda to take the dog away. Sorry. Once there was a shepherd who was tormented by the constant assault of dogs upon his flock. He prayed to Ia for protection, and the great god of wisdom, Zhu, Sin, sent his son Merodak to reassure the shepherd. Ia has heard thee, said Merodak, when the great dogs assault thee. Then, O shepherd, seize them from behind, and lay them down, hold them and overcome them. Strike their heads, pierce their breasts. They are gone, never may they return. With the wind may they go, with the storm above it. Take their road and cut off their going. Seize their mouths, seize their mouths, seize their weapons, seize their teeth and make them ascend by the command of Ia, the Lord of Wisdom, by the command of Merodak, the Lord of Revelation. But what do the names mean in Sumerian? Ukumu to be destroyed by the roar and the oath of exorcism. Akkulu, we will consume the people in our foundation, to frighten and disturb mankind, to cause trouble. Ixuda, the all-seeing eye is everlasting, the remote distant one, Pazuzu, who prolongs the gnashing of teeth, and the cries and screams within the offspring of the deep. Il Tehu will be delivered in frightful fear to the vulture god, Anzu, the divine storm bird, the protective demon, 
a curse upon the tablet, and su also meaning eagle or vulture. I ask you what is a storm, and what is an eagle without its wind? The gazelle, or antelope, was a mythological animal in Babylonia, so far as it represented a Yar, who is entitled the princely gazelle, and the gazelle that gives the earth. But this animal was also appropriated to the precursor of Enlil and Enki, aka Mol Lil. Mol means Lord, or Starry. The word Star is cognate with God. Mol Lil represents the evil wind of the gods. Mol Lel, the god of Nippur, who was especially called the Gazelle God. The problem being that Mol Lel holds a secret. When Zhu Sen stole the role of Baal, he became Mol Lel and his own female self, Molmi Sarah, who, like Enki, is the author of the Lamentation Rite, otherwise known as the Book of Hades, meaning the author is actually Lord Zhu. Molel and Molme Sarah become known as Enki and Enlil. This is identical to Shamash dwelling within Ishtar. Ishtar represents the pit, and Shamash divine justice and they are both the children of Zhu. Among other things, Zhu means to mirror, and Uz is the goat god. It is likely, therefore, that this animal had been worshipped totemically at Nippur. Many of the early cylinders represent it, being offered in sacrifice to a god, and for a time, that god is identified with that creature, indicating the god being worshipped. And bas reliefs and other carvings show it reposing in the arms of various deities, meaning they too worship that god, because Zhu, Sin, is the god of the gods. The goat too seems to have been particularly sacred, and formed one of the signs of the zodiac, meaning originally belonging to the brood of Tiamat. Zhu means to mirror, a god called Uz, has for his name the Akkadian word for goat, 
in Sumerian, and is God, and is cognate with Dingir, but in Assyrian, and Dingir, is Ash or Mash. Mash meaning twinned or he goat, Ash, a wish paired with a curse. The word light also means deception, and we are blinded by the light of the gods and their reflective nature. Mr. Hormuzud Rassam found a sculptured stone tablet in the Temple of the Sun God at Sippara, which was an inscription to Sin, Lord Zhu, and his children, Shamash and Ishtar. If we mirror the goat, Mash, and align it with Ash, it is possible that we get Shamash. Zhu is the oracle, but also a curse. Zhu, the gatekeeper, Ishtar, the pit of destruction, and Shamash, the curse of the renown, or the devoted curse. And the inscription being, they are set as companions at the approach to the deep, in sight of the god Uz. This god Uz is depicted, sitting on a throne, watching the revolution of the sun disk, <laughs> which is placed upon a table and made to revolve by means of a rope or string. He is clad in a robe of a goat skin, no different from the later Teraphem stolen by Jacob. Above Shamash, the rope is held by Enlil, formerly Mullil, formerly Zu. The Goat Cult The cult of goats appears to be of a very ancient one, and the strange thing is that it appears to have found its way into medieval and even into modern magic and pseudo-religion. I know how. The figure Cernanus was worshipped in ancient Gaul, and Saint Bede transcribed the Hebrew text into Old English from Norse and in Frankish, so it appears that he is working for the forces coming into Britain. In the same way the statue of Sin was positioned beyond the borders of Assyria to poison, demonize the land and its people. Cernanus arrives around 700 AD, 16 years after the Great Plague of Sunderland. And that, my dear friends, is how the Goat God made its way into Britain. There is very little doubt that it is the Baphomet of the Knights Templi, and also the Sabbatic Goat of the Witchcraft of the Middle Ages. Uz is indeed the root for Baphomet. The name Baphomet first appeared in trial transcripts during the Inquisition of the Knights Templar in the early 1300s. Some scholars believe that the name was a corruption of Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad, probably because Muhammad is also known as Mashu, similar to Moses, both meaning he goat and twinned, cognate with Ash, Dingir, and An. With Moses, they aren't horns, they are light, but light also means deception. Hmm, so. Yeah, we are blinded by the light. In my local legend, the Lampton Worm, a group of Templar Knights, went on a crusade to Jerusalem and came back with a relic. And here it seems almost certain that when the Crusaders journeyed to Asia Minor, they came into contact with the remains of the old Babylonian cult. 
when Philip the Fair of France prosecuted them on the charge of heresy, a great deal of curious evidence was extorted from them the Knights Templar regarding the worship of an idol that they kept in their lodges. The first statue of Cernanus is found to the northwest of Sunderland, and Sunderland has one of the oldest Freemason lodges in the UK, if not the oldest. The real character of this idol they seemed unable to explain. It was said that the image was made in the likeness of Baphomet, which was said to be a corruption of Mahomet Muhammad, which was the general Christian name at that period, although others give a Greek derivation for the name. That was probably because Baphomet was first recorded by Herodotus, who wrote in Greek. <laughs> But still, Herodotus aligns us with Baphomet. I believe Baphomet may be the Latin name. Because a format is the root for format, the way in which something is arranged or set out, Bar, I believe, is Sumerian. Referring to hepatoscopy, the reading of the liver, the liver omen, as the word Bar means house, liver, liver omen or model. Its house is a five-pointed star, very similar to your dwelling. Bar also refers to a shelled creature or a scraping tool, like a knife or blade. Zoo. The figure was often described as possessing a goat's head and horns. That too, the sabbatic goat was of Eastern and probably Babylonian origin, is scarcely to be doubted. At the Witch Orgies in France, no, not Paris 2024, there's always one, isn't there? Although, hmm. at the witch orgies in France and elsewhere. I suppose that would be the cockhold. <laughs> Sorry. One more time, at the orgies in France and elsewhere, those who were afterwards brought to book for their sorceries declared that Satan appeared to them in the shape of a goat, and that they worshipped him in this form. The Sabbatic meetings during the 15th century in the wood of Mophiaenes, near Arash, had at their centre a goat demon with a human countenance, and a similar fiend was adored in Germany and in Scotland. From all this, it is clear that the Sabbatic Goat must have had some connection with the East. Eliphas Levi drew a picture of the Baphomet or the Sabbatic Goat to accompany one of his occult works, and strangely enough the symbols that he adorns it with are Oriental. Moreover, the sun disk figures in the drawing, the light of the gods. Now Levi knew nothing of Babylonian mythology, allegedly, although he was moderately versed in the mythology of modern occultism, and it would seem that he drew his information from modern or medieval sources, and that these must have been in direct line from Babylonian law, and therefore bilingual with Sumerian. Adar, the sun god of Nippur, was in the same manner connected with the pig, which may have been the totem of the city he ruled over, and many other gods had attendant animals or birds, like the sun god Kish, whose symbol was an eagle, 
and, as previously mentioned, Anne is cognate with Mash, goat. They are indeed variations of the same creature, originally the brood of Tiamat. Those monsters who had composed the host of Tiamat were supposed, after the defeat and destruction of their commandress, to have been hurled like Satan and his angels into the abyss beneath. We read of their confusion in the four tablets in the creation epic. This legend seems to be the original source of the belief that those who rebelled against high heaven were thrust into outer darkness. Enuma Elish, when on high. And it is Mash covering the story of Lord Sue. Modok is not the savior because he too steals the role of Bell. The punishment for Lord Zhu was bird form, and this is why it changed into the goat, the Ba format. In the Book of Enoch, we read of a great abyss, regarding which an angel, Malak Memetim, an Anunnaki, said to the prophet, O oh my word, this is so Su, glass, transparent. An Zu or An Sin. Sin Zu can mean to consume. It also means blade, obsidian, tooth, or teeth, also meaning wisdom. And here, in the Book of Enoch, it is mentioned that this is a place of the consummation of heaven and earth. Alternatively, this is the place of Anzu. And again, in a later chapter, these are the stars who have transgressed the command of God, the highest, and are bound till 10,000 worlds, which must mean 10,000 years. The number of the days of their sins shall have consummated, meaning to be consumed over a 10,000 year period. This is the prison of the angels, and here they are held to eternity. And logically, why Sin, Zu, is the gatekeeper, and also a curse protecting the tablet. Eleven great monsters are spoken of by Babylonian myth as comprising the host of Tiawath, the precursor to Tiamat, besides many lesser forms having the heads of men and the body of birds. Remember, these possessing spirits were put to flight. Strangely enough, we find these monsters figuring in a legend concerning an early Babylonian king. The Invasion of the Anunnaki Monsters The tablet upon which this legend was impressed were at first known as the Cuthian Legend of Creation, a misnomer, a fallacy, for this legend does not give an account of the creation of the world at all, but deals with the invasion of Babylonia by a race of monsters who were descended from the gods, and who waged war against the legendary king of that period. For three years they battled. For three years they battled. A volcano eruption, or a comet, could darken the skies for over three years. In the case of Azazel, the biblical goat demon, formerly an angel, he was bound hand and foot, and cast into Dudael, a prison in the desert, where it is said that the light may not touch his face. I suggest 
What if cataclysm, apocalypse, is the gate, a time of complete darkness, and incredible, ni melum fear, upon which the gods feed. These monsters are the mirrors, the monstrous alter egos of the Apkalu, or Anunnaki, later known as Terra Femme, and depicted hidden, disguised as our ancestor statues. This would be Uka, Lugal Uka, a title of Marduk. Uka referring to six ornaments, or six figures of speech, because the great light, their king, is Amun hidden. Now here, the king tells the story himself. Unfortunately, the first portions of both tablets containing the story are missing, but all of this information relating to these gods, or demons, or gods once demons, the gods and their monstrous alter egos are usually contained in the second portion, almost as if the first half is Elu, sleep, sending people to sleep, and their goal is to awaken the Watchers from their slumber. The King tells the story himself, and because of these damaged lines, we plunge right away into a description of the dread beings who came upon the people of Babylonia in their multitudes. Zoo, red clay. Here, we are told that they preferred muddy water rather than clean water. These creatures, said the king, were without moral sense, glorying their power and slaughtering those whom they took captive. They had bodies of birds, and some of them had the faces of ravens. They had eventually been fostered by the gods, their very own counterparts. This possibly refers to how they regained their worship. The demons were fostered by the gods, from the gods once demons, in some inaccessible region. The Kur, the mountain, or the Ish, cognate with Kur, meaning mountain or pit, which is a misnomer because it refers to the biblical outer darkness and refers to a realm below our own, the outside. And here they multiplied greatly. They came in like a storm cloud on the land, 360,000 in number. Their king was called Benini, their mother, a name similar to Mol Lel, is Melili, and their leader was Menengab, who, like Lugal Oka, had six subordinates. The king, perplexed, knew not what to do. He was afraid that if he gave them battle, he might in some way offend the gods. The gods once demons. But at last, through his priests, he addressed the divine beings, and made offerings of lambs in sacrifice to them, from which he received a favorable answer, and decided to give battle to the monstrous invaders. This king is either an idiot or he knows what he's doing. Against this monstrous army of 360,000, he sent an army of 120,000, but not one of these returned alive. Again, he sends less men, 90,000 warriors, to meet them, but the same fate overtook these. And in the third year, 
he dispatched an army of nearly 70,000 troops, meaning he had a total of 280,000, all of whom perished in the war against the gods. Gods once demons, the demons fostered by the gods. Then the unfortunate monarch broke down, and groaning aloud, cried out that he had brought misfortune upon his realm. Nevertheless, rising from his lethargic despair, he stated his intention to go forth against the enemy in his own person, saying, the pride of this people of the night I will curse with death and destruction, with fear, terror, and famine, and with misery of every kind. I'm quite sure that this king is aware that the Anunnaki gods, gods once demons, are a curse upon mankind, who feed on fear, terror, and famine, or misery of any kind. So his battle against them actually identifies their worship. Before setting out to meet the foe, he made an offering to the gods. The manner in which he overcame the invaders is by no means clear, but it would seem that he annihilated them by the means of a deluge. The Great Flood, or the Abzu, which would be the realm in which the gods dwell. In the last portion of the legend, the king exhorts his successors not to lose heart when in great peril, but instead to take courage from his example. Would the message be to kill all of your men and then run off by yourself into the arms of the enemy? while invoking the gods, and by doing so, cursing your kingdom. Nergal is an Anzu, a lion-faced demon, a divine storm bird. Anzu, the water god, Uzna, meaning fire, Uzna, the fire god, fire, the symbol of lightning. Anzu is the curse protecting the tablet. The better description would be from his form, Humbaba. His voice is the deluge. His speech is fire. And his breath is death. His voice is the Iya, the Abzu. His speech is Uzna. And his breath is Merodak. Uzna fire is also light, and this may be the light of the gods. Cognate with Lu, Dib, and Dab, the light of the gods is entwined, bow, twist, convulse, with treachery, lies, and deceit. The light bright shining, they called it the shining, the shining one. Here it is Nogal, the burner. The king then inscribes a tablet with his advice, which he placed in the shrine of Nogal, the Anzu, the lion-faced demon. Strengthen thy wall, he said. Oh my word, I believe he's turning Babylon into a prison, made with a wall too high to climb. This in defense against winged creatures. It would be like shooting fish in a barrel. Strengthen thy wall, he said. Fill thy cisterns with water. Bring in your treasure chests, and your corn, and your silver, and all your possessions. Babylon becoming more like a dragon's lair. He also advised those of his descendants who are faced by similar conditions 
not to expose themselves needlessly to the enemy. It was thought at one time that this legend applied to the circumstances of the creation. And, 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 wait for it that the speaker was the god Nogal. Nogal, An and Zu, who was waging war against the brood of Tiawath. It was believed that, according to local conditions, at Kuta, Nogal would have taken the place of Merodak, death and slaughter. Marduk replaces Zu, and Zu replaces Marduk. And this is why the Assyrians worshipped the Akitu festival, as it is a cover for the moon god. But it has now been made clear that although the tablet was intended to be placed in the shrine of Nogal, the speaker was in reality an early Babylonian king, and he is clearly deceiving the people and worshipping the demons within Merodach, death and slaughter. The work of Spence is amazing, and it has made my work profound, because we both focused on what we are not allowed to know. The Anunnaki Eagle The Sumerian word An means eagle, and the word Anzu means eagle or vulture. And in this myth, we see this eagle in the form of a vulture. Before I begin, one line from the legend of Zu will serve us well here, derived from a text written by A. H. Sayus. A long but broken text explains why Zu had to take refuge in the mountain of Sabu under the disguise of a bird of prey. Now which bird of prey would that be? An eagle or a vulture? <laughs> I have more to say on that matter, but we'll leave it until after the myth. And the eagle, as we have seen previously, the eagle was perhaps regarded as a symbol of the sun god. A Babylonian fable tells how he quarreled with the serpent and incurred the reptile's hatred. Feeling hungry, he resolved to eat the serpent's young and communicated his intentions to his own family. One of his children advised him not to devour the serpent's brood, because if he did so, he would incur the enmity of the god Shamash. Lord Zu is the father of Shamash and Ishtar. Alternatively, the father of the pit and its curse. But the eagle did not hearken to his offspring, and, swooping down from heaven, sought out the serpent's nest, and devoured his young. On his arrival home, the serpent discovered his loss, and at once repaired, in great indignation with furious anger to the god Shamash, to whom he appealed for justice. This is quite rightfully so, because the eagle is his father. The serpent 
Its nest, he told the god, was set in a tree, and the eagle had swooped upon it, destroying it with his mighty wings, and devouring the little serpents as they fell from it. Help, O Shamash, cried the serpent. Thy net is like unto the broad earth. Thy snare, a trap, is like the distant heaven in wideness. Who can escape thee? Shamash, hearkening to his appeal, described to him how he might succeed in obtaining vengeance upon the eagle. Now here, it's worth noting that Anzu became known as Imdu Good, the word good meaning bull, ox, or carp, and also cognate with An, eagle. The vengeance of Shamash, the son of Lord Zu. Take the road, he said, and go into the Kur, the mountain, or pit, and Amun. Hide thyself in the dead body of a wild ox. Tear open its body, and all the birds of heaven shall swoop down upon it like a vulture. The eagle shall come with the rest, and when he seeks for the best parts of the carcass, do you seize him by the wing, tear off his wings, his pinions, and his claws, pull him into pieces, and cast him into the pit. There may he die a death from hunger and thirst. This is probably where we get the form of Merodach, Marduk. The serpent did as Shamash had bidden him. He soon came across the body of a wild ox, into which he glided after opening the carcass. Shortly afterwards, he heard the beating of the wings of numberless birds, a legion, all of which swooped down and ate the flesh. But the eagle suspected the purpose of the serpent, and did not come with the rest, until greed prompted him to share in the feast. Come, said the eagle to his children, let us swoop down, and let us also eat the flesh of this wild ox. Now the young eagle, who had before dissuaded his father, from eating the serpent's young, again begged him to stop his purpose. That would be the child who begged him to stop, because he would invoke the wrath of Shamash. But Shamash is the son of the eagle, and the symbol of divine justice. Divine being An, the eagle, and it would make sense because Shamash was the one who told the serpent to hide within the ox. And here, his unnamed child said, Oh, have care, my father, for I am certain that the serpent lurks in yonder carcass for the purpose of destroying you. This would be why Shamash is the Lord of Light, Lu. Light bright shining, and treachery, lies, and deceit. But again, the eagle did not hearken to the warning of his child, but swooped onto the carcass of the wild ox. He so far obeyed the injunctions of his offspring. However, after closely examining the dead ox, for the purpose of discovering whether any trap lurked near it. Satisfied that all is well, he commenced to feed upon it, when suddenly the serpent seized upon him, 
and grabbed hold of him. The eagle at once began to beg for mercy, but the enraged reptile told him that an appeal to Shamash was irrevocable, and that if he did not punish the king of birds, would be punished by that god. And despite the eagle's further protests, he tore off his wings and pinions, pulled him to pieces, and finally cast him into the pit. Now it's worth noting here that En means Lord, and Ochai, Ok means Ox, Bull, or Carp, and is cognate with God, An Eagle. In the Book of Enoch, it is the messenger, Metatron, aka Enoch, who cast Azazel into the pit. And what would the symbol of the god of wisdom, Zu, be? Zu, Blade, was the original Cadusus, a great serpent entwined with the wings of an eagle. From the legend of Zu, let me seize the tablets of destiny of the gods. That part may be a mistranslation, because Lu, Deb, and Dab mean seas, light, bright, shining, but also treachery, lies, and deceit. Let me shine in the tablets of destiny. Let me deceive the tablets of destiny of the gods. And the laws of all the gods let me establish Lukumum, which may be Lukumu, meaning rumor, news, or reputation. In the Cambridge Dictionary, it means somewhere comfortable. Let my throne be set up. Let me seize the oracles. Let me urge on the whole of all of them, even the spirits of heaven. Then all the gods refuse, as they fear the curse of Zu, meaning the punishment, which is bird form. The red bull, here the red ox, gives you wings which is very similar to the Cadusus, is it not? But like Rimon, Nebu, the son of Marduk, also refused to hunt down his brother God, the consequence being, as we have seen, that Zu escaped with his life, but was changed into a bird, and had to live in exile from heaven for the rest of time. Who means bird or flying reptile? The bird in question is the eagle, but also any other unnatural winged creature. That sounds very familiar, doesn't it? <laughs>